Welcome back, Acorn fans. We are back. We have the last game tonight. This is going to be on a new map that I recently made called... <laughs> Stefanov mentioned in the chat right now that he did not expect Haiku to actually use a Chrono Rush, but hey, it, it can be done. Or, well, sort of Chrono Rush. It's a Chrono Port attack. Anyway, New map, it's called Abrams Research Station. It's also the first map to have water actually visible on the map. Cordova has some water textures, but they aren't super visible. This one actually does have them visible. Anyhow, this is a match between Shaka and myself. I was played a little while ago. I'm playing Grekum and Shaka's playing CISO. We're just testing out this map a bit early on, and yeah, we we're playing up. So Shaka is building up his economy, starting out, and so am I, or actually, Sorry. Let's do it in third person. So is Shadow Fury 33. So Shadow Fury is getting his base set up. The RPs are having a bit of trouble getting into position, but his RP should be able to get in place roughly in time for him to actually be making use of it. Anyway, he does have his triad set up, so he will be able to build some R RPs, and that is another well, basic economy start for Grekum. So both players going for basic economy start. Shock is actually setting up his RPs interestingly, because this way he is... He's double harvesting on these two crates, but he will be able to avoid... Actually, double harvesting on a lot of the corner crates. It looks like he's planning on going from the corner crates to the center crates later on. I mean, I'm really not sure how to analyze this. The, the crate positioning isn't super important. Admittedly, you want the RPs to move as little as possible when they have to move, but I'm surprised he's double harvesting in the first place, to be honest. I'm a bit surprised he isn't just setting up, like, one in every crate. Setting up an RP here and here so they would harvest from these two crates. Regardless, that's what he's going for, and he's getting a factory as well, so it looks like he's going for a quick max because he has no importers yet, but he might just be building an importer once he gets the RP, or sorry, the LC to do it. And so Shadow Fury is going to be, yeah, we're just asking about lag too because we're having lag issues, but I don't think they were huge in this case. Anyway, Shadow Fury is building up a very quick reef, which is, as I mentioned before, kind of unusual, but building up a very quick reef nonetheless. And using that to... This is about, well, actually, 217. Not hugely quick, but still kind of faster than usual. Getting a couple more Arctos to the RPs. So right now, Shalka has two more RPs than Shadow Fury. And the Nacho is coming in from Shadow Fury to actually scout out Shalka. Finding him, luckily, in the first try. We'll be able to do some harassment, too, as he gets there. Tagging the factory. Okay, not super useful. But Shalka is now going to be aware that... Well, I'm atta well Shadow Fury is attacking him. And Shadow Fury will be able to see what Shock is up to a little bit, but not really close. He's not really close enough to actually see anything. I mean, he sees a marine, sees a factory. The Octo doesn't really see much else. So, yeah, there isn't much that is available to Shadow Fury in terms of information. While Shadow Fury is, at Shaka's point in time, about 239 mark, still building up, Shaka is going up to scout in his own. He doesn't know what direction Shadow Fury is in right now. He is scouting up towards the... actually no, it looks like he's he's scouting up, but I think he might actually be scouting up towards this side of the base, and everything's gone all red. Well, anyhow, the... That was bizarre. Anyway, so, the reef is coming in, and we'll be... Sorry about that, I... that, that red thing kind of made me go nuts. Anyway, now that my sanity's been lost, Shadow Fury building up some QPRPs, getting up. He has his LCRPs mostly built up, but he could build some more to saturate. While Shalk, on the other hand, is attacking. He's stopping this Octo from the. or trying to stop the Octo. The Octo's actually doing a fair amount of damage in there. It looks like the. Well, you see here the Faro and Seppi being set up. It looks like Shadow Fury might be actually using them to set up an expansion at some point. I'm not sure because I know having. Having been him, that he oftentimes will lift up his pro-generating triad, or at least once it runs out of energy, lift it up and then move it to an expansion, and then use some of the other units to rebuild the triad. Just because it's a bit more, it's a bit more efficient that way. Once you run out of energy, you can't pro-generate anything. So that is going to be. Oh yeah, and this auto is still actually managed to do quite a bit of damage, but it looks like the red time was going to stop that. Shalka, back in the time, he did manage to stop it completely. He wouldn't have... Well, you probably didn't have the units in place at the time. Now he does. I mean, this iteration through. So that's really not any effect. And Shadow Fury's also set up a mound on this little... little raised platform here. 
Useful for scouting. I'm not sure if it's the best place to put it because oftentimes, like, this... Uh, this spot gives you a bit better vision, but I think he's just being a bit paranoid. Not quite sure about when attacks are going to come in. Just making absolutely sure that he can see everything coming in. Probably going to try to get some mounds around the map as well if he can. And getting a... Oh, here we are. Actually, setting a Faro and Seppi over to the top left expansion. Not sure if it's... It looks like it's not these two, but it might very well be... Just double check their energy levels. And, okay, it doesn't matter. At this point, it's hard to tell. And right now, it's impossible to tell because I can't see the energy from this point in time. Shadow Fury, of course, is going towards the future. Shadow Fury has a tendency to fast forward like that. And it's, it's an okay strategy, I think, but it sometimes has its weaknesses because it can allow your opponent a lot of room to hit you in the past, and then it's hard to respond at times. Anyway, Shalka is further in the past. He is definitely fast-forwarding as well, but focusing more, like I said, he had to focus on that attack, and now fast-forwarding towards the future. Building up when he can, and getting machinery fairly late in the game, actually, about five minutes in. So he's getting machinery, and, like I said, well, Shadowfree already had advanced strategy. He actually had a firebot coming in as well. This firebot, in fact. So this is going to be fairly difficult for Shalka to deal with. He doesn't have... Well, he doesn't have any closure attackers other than the Sops right now. He does have mechs for attacking air, but it's going to be tricky for him to deal with this. And now Shadowfear has a massive base class, or, okay, half dozen base class units. Farbot, Sebibot coming in, trying to just deal with everything that Shalka has, trying to make sure that nothing is being built around the map while also getting his expansion up. And Shalka hasn't actually had a chance to expand yet, but of course Shalka is further in the past, and he does have a Macrofab up here now, and that Macrofab... That's probably going to distract the units coming from Shadow Fury. Just because it... Oh, and an HTC is coming in here. We'll be able to start harassing the units and stop the expansion. And Shalka... Oh! Crap, that Faro's dead. Okay, so Shalka has just stopped Shadow Fury's expansion, or at least heavily disrupted. So Shadow Fury's going to have a lot less economy than he did before. Though admittedly, he already was able to get the Faro with the... Faro part of the economy he had. And this is why I was doing this sort of Command and Conquer style where he had all the resources in little clumps. Just... But spread distantly across the map is because it's kind of tricky for Grekum to expand really effectively and still be able to build up to the point where they can survive. Anyway, Shadow Fury is also, he's going for legal class units, looks like he's going for Seppi Legos on top of what he already has and getting the Seppi Legos Farbot attacking him with the Octo with the base class units going straight for Shalka's base and that will be very destructive if it gets in but I don't know if Shalka will really allow that honestly. Shalka has machinery. Shalka can easily build up units to deal with this, and he already has, further in the past, he has built factories in the middle of the map to stop this, and ATT is coming in as well, stopping the expansion, and the expansion has been stopped again, and there was another expansion, Seppi and Faro coming into this south expansion, that has been stopped as well, or appears to be stopped. Shadowfree might have used that part of this control group here, but that's now attacking this ATHC, trying to defend the Faro and Seppi, but it won't be able to defend them in time. Shalka's doing a a very good job getting map control from under Shadow Fury's feet. Shadow Fury had, well, he was going to get map control in the future, but it's sort of potential map control. He didn't have it secured in the past. Shaka, however, managed to undermine that. And of course, the Lancer in the back as well. Seppi's taking care of that handily, but with the ATFCs coming from the front, Lancers from the back, and tanks from all sides eventually, that's going to be very difficult for Shadow Fury to deal with. Well, tank right here, which will be coming. So this is going to be. And Mar tanks as well. So Shalka is putting Shadow Fury in a very paranoid position. Shadow Fury is going to have a hard time expanding out, or at least being confident to expand and really push out. Probably still try because you pretty much have to expand, but it's going to be difficult to do so. Unfortunately, I mean Shalka, oddly enough, is is not expanding himself. He does have this marine coming in, which okay, he is starting to expand now, but he's going to the most vulnerable expansion on the map. I'm a bit surprised he's not going towards the expansion that's more protected in the northeast corner of the map. It's a bizarre thing to do because the way the map is set up, that expansion there would be safe for the southeast base. But, you no, know, he's going for the contested central expansion. And a dome is being built as well to help deal with these factories. Shalka has jumped back further to deal with what was going on in the past. And we don't have a separate go yet, but I'm sure we will soon. Shadow Fury is in a position to start building some. But anyway, Shalka is about two minutes down from Shadow Fury's position. Trying to get rid of this com, this mound in the center of the map, which, or the center of this little raised platform, not really going to help much, honestly. That lance is just being distracted. But he, Shalka is getting this expansion, and like I said, I'm surprised he isn't getting any safer expansion, though, because this... If Shadow Fury does manage to get out of this attack, and it looks like Shadow Fury is managing to do so, with his dome here, getting rid of a lot of the units that are coming in, 
and Schalke is trying to take care of all these units before they actually deal any real damage. Martank from Schalke coming out to try to help with the attack, but that's being destroyed by a Farapod. Schalke does not have detectors anywhere nearby, and the dome is also being used quite effectively to help support this attack, so forward domes are really helping Shadow Fury out right now. Though it looks like he didn't ultimately manage to get that forward dome out. So the Martank is going to manage to get through. Farpod didn't manage to kill it in time, but the other Martank that's going to support it is going to die. But Shalka needs to deal... Sorry, Shalka is going to be able to deal with this attack. And Shadow Fury needs to find a way of getting rid of that Martank. Because Martank's very annoying for Shrekken to deal with. Very annoying to deal with in general, because artillery units are just... They're, you know, they're long-range units. Kind of tricky to get around them. Octos are meant to be a soft counter. And of course, air units do a good job, but air units are expensive, so you don't want to be building too many of them. And the Farbot, like I said, the Farbot is doing a great job getting rid of the Martank as it is, but this Reef here, not really not sure what good it'll do. I really don't see why Shadow Creek built that. I think that was... Oh, that's probably what he was trying to do when the attack was going on to help support the attack, but now the attack has been completely destroyed. So the support's gone, but Sepi Ligo's coming in. Here we are, Sepi Ligo's. Shadow Fury has finally built some Sepi Ligo's. And he has them set up. He's... Sending more Octos out to support the attack, and it looks like he did manage to ultimately hold back the attack. Got yeah, the looks like Farpod yes, Farpod has come back to deal from here. The Farpod that was over here attacking the Macrofab has come back to help deal with this attack and stop it mostly. And Shadow Fury, because of this, is able to build up some domes. He has Reef still alive, or was still alive for a while. ATC coming in behind to start harassing as well. Not doing a whole lot right now. It's not cloaked, of course. Shaka, however, going back. Doesn't look like he's focusing on that. It looks like he's focusing more on... You well, know, focusing more on his main base. Getting more infantry up. Trying to get an infantry-heavy strategy going. He has a couple of tanks in his main base as well. Not sure if he's going for a tank transport strategy, but I kind of doubt it. No one really does that. It's kind of unfortunate, because that'd be cool to see, but no one really does that. Anyway, Shadow Fury has been able to take care of this proxy base. A Lancer is still inside his base, but isn't doing much right now. Shalka has that as a harassment tool. And Shadow Fury does not seem to be aware of it. None of his units can actually see the Lancer. So Shalka has pretty much hidden it away. He also has a couple defense turrets over here. I'm not sure if he's planning to expand to the north. Shalka, that is. But it is certainly going to stop Shadow Fury from expanding to the north, which would be a good place to expand. And he also... Shadow Fury has not expanded to this base where he intended to go originally. He's much more focused on making sure this attack works out. And Shadow Fury has actually done that. So going to look for Shalka's point of view. And yeah, Shalka sees the attack coming in. Fox base is being destroyed. Sepi Ligo is coming in from the top. Will be attacking. Trying to figure out if there's an extra expansion here. Because Shadow Fury suspects, probably, that Shalka has an expansion here. Because Shalka should have an expansion. I mean, that's a safe expansion to take. There's no reason Shalka wouldn't have that expansion. But Shadow Fury, moving most of his units past, just taking care of the armory with the Octo and Farapod. Really should be moving some Farapod away, though. Getting Sepi to the main base, and Sepi are going to start dealing some serious damage. Getting rid of one of the importers, and the other importer is going to go down soon after. Shalka focusing towards the future. He doesn't have Gate Tech yet, and looks like he's just focusing on it for macro purposes. Jumping back, actually, to the past to see what he can do about the Sepi attack. He does have a tank coming in, which is dealing a fair bit of damage to the units. Shadow Fury did not send him to attack move, he sent him just to move. It's kind of unfortunate. But Shadow Fury does have Chrono Pointing anyway, and he just used it! So, Sepi Ligos are back in the past, they are right here, the blue time wave here will carry them forward, and will help this attack even... just make it even more powerful than it already is. It's two Sepi Ligos. Two Sepi Ligos are not to be trifled with, they are very powerful. Sepi Ligos deal about as much damage to ground as Farapods do, a bit less, but... in damage per second, that is. But not by much, I think it's like 60... 60 something damage per second versus the Farapods 89. So not a huge difference. Shalka is going to have a lot on his plate to deal with these Sepi Ligos. And yeah, Sepi Ligos deal 53 versus ground, sorry. But it's still it's still a pretty respectable amount of damage versus ground, especially when you consider that versus air, they're pretty much uncontested. Like, it's an air superiority fighter. The only things that can really get in its way would be lots of frigates, lots of maybe lots of Sepi Pods, or other Sepi Ligos if you're playing Brackham. Or, like, Tef... Now, Teth Turchers, you have to have a large number of them to deal with it. Vector doesn't have an anti-air air base unit other than Teth Turcher, so Teth Halkins would be somewhat decent. But Sepi Ligos also have a massive advantage of range, and the Farpod for Shadow Fury is dealing a lot of damage to Shalka's base, so Shalka is being heavily attacked from all sides. 
while RPs from Shadow Fury are rushing into the central contested expansion. And there is a Marine there, actually, from Shalka's earlier expansion. And the dome in the center of the base from Shadow Fury being destroyed by Shalka. Shadow Fury does see this happen. Can't really do much about it, but he does have his expansion in the top left finally available. He's finally able to build up there. 12 minutes into the game, he finally gets an expansion, proper expansion, with the triad and everything. Although it's still kind of preliminary, there is an armory there which could easily spell doom if Shalka uses it. And of course, Shadow Fury, well, the blue time move did carry the damage over from the Sepi Legos. But it looks like even that, the green time was carrying even more damage from more Corona Force that came back. And yet, the far pod here is doing what it can. Shalka jumping towards the future, seeing what's going on, and not really macroing there, however. He does have a bit of macro done in the future, but not a whole lot. Like I said, he is focusing on this infantry heavy strategy, which is surprising me that he isn't getting more and more armories. He really should have like six armories or so, and maybe two or three more importers in order to do this. I'm just surprised he's going for infantry heavy anyway. With Sepi Legos, you really should be going for something more. Well, anti-air focused. Either lots of mechs, or like I said, lots of frigates. Or... I wouldn't recommend lots of lancers, but it could work, I'd imagine. Anyway, Sepi Ligos are, like I said, in the past. Check if you're double-checking them, along with the Farpod. Farpod's not going to do much, but Sepi Ligos still are doing a good job dealing with... Well, okay, they're killing RPs that don't really matter yet. And... Oh, wow, I guess... It, okay, never mind. So, Shaka actually has lost his main base to the Sepi Ligos and Farpod at this point. He does have the proxy base, he does have this proxy macrofab and this proxy armory, but the proxy armory is being attacked by the dome. Shadow Fury did see that coming, so the dome is going to be able to take care of that proxy armory, and the armory in the center of the map is going to be destroyed. Sepi Ligos have come back to destroy it. Shadow Fury jumping back, just double check what went on, and yes, so four Sepi Ligos coming in, this is what happens, it's 1123 mark, four Sepi coming in and destroying everything. And the two Sepi Ligos coming in from the back, still destroying everything, getting rid of the importers, getting rid of armory, sorry, factory, the armory is already dead. And once you get to the 13 minute mark, or 14 minute mark, it's done. So Shaka has lost his main base, he has some RPs, and that's about it. And he does have the Macrofab here, he does have the Armory here, but the Armory is being heavily damaged, he hasn't started building it yet. He does have this expansion over here, but it's not doing too much. And it looks like this is going to be pretty much GG very soon. I'm not sure what Shaka can do right now. What he can do is rebuild with this Marine. And that's probably what it's going to try to do. And yes, he just got rid of... So, sorry, he's just trying to get a tank in. Sorry, I meant to say, just got rid of that tank coming in to attack his expansion. Well, it's a shared expansion right now. The Magrafab being heavily attacked as well, and it looks like Shaka does not have a lot of places to go. This Marine is really all he has left that he can actually use. And it's in a bad spot to be useful at all. And this Magrafab as well... Being in a bad spot itself is going to be problematic. And the RP is coming up and will be dealing some damage. Sorry, not dealing some damage. We'll be getting some resources. Not dealing damage. What am I saying? RPs don't deal damage. And here's Shaka's attempt to get back. Marine has gone... Not this Marine. A different Marine has gone towards the north end. And will be building some importers. Building a factory. Quite useful that way. But that is going to be tough for him to get back right now. And here we are. Here's the frigates I was talking about, actually. Frigates, Blackbird, Martank. Shaka is definitely using the macro power, And Sepi Ligos have moved away from that. Trying instead to get rid of this armory. It looks like, yeah, Shaka's actually made use of the armory too. So Shaka is using the infrastructure he had near the unplayable past, making it basically fainting out Shadow Fury. Shadow Fury has impression that Shaka had pretty much died. But Shaka is doing a pretty good job getting back with the infrastructure he had that Shadow Fury didn't manage to destroy in time. However, Shadow Fury does have Chrono I mean, no matter what, Shadow Fury has the ability to Chrono back and deal with this before it's even close to being threatened. He just does that. So Shadow Fury coming back to deal with this. Or help deal with this. It will be able to deal with some damage ultimately, but not be able to deal with it in time to stop the turret from coming up. Will, however, Shadow Fury's forces will be able to destroy this armory anyway. So Shaka doing what he can to deal with everything, but his best hope is going to be this north base here. That is what he has. He has a factory, he has a couple of importers. Could use an armory, another armory, but not a huge deal. Trying to get as many marines as he can with this one. And the macrofab over here. Oh. Shadow Fury actually managed to destroy the Macrofab before it became useful at all, so the all of those frigates and Martank and everything didn't actually end up existing. The Macrofab was destroyed in time. So Shaka does not have a Macrofab to work with. He does have the armory. He does have the north base. That's his only real hope. And this Marine is doing what he can. She's doing a very good job stopping these RPs from actually getting anywhere. But the main base right now for Shadow Fury is in the northwest. It's not in the south. There's... That South Contested Expansion, not really contested anymore. In fact, 
given the current positions of the players, this northwest base is now the contested one. Because Shaka's basically made this his new main, and this base is all but abandoned. So Shaka Fury's safest expansion is going to be in the south, once he gets rid of the marine. However, being that the marine is still there, it's not really that helpful. So Sebastian Go did manage to get rid of the armory ultimately near the northwest expansion. And, of course, the Shaka is building up what he can in his main base, building mechs, building tanks, getting himself really well set up, and Sepi Ligo coming in, trying to take care of this, and the mechs will be able to just make short work that Sepi Ligo. I mean, four mechs, that's a lot to deal with for Sepi Ligo. We'll be able to kill one of them, but going back in time before it even becomes a deal breaker for the Sepi Ligo. Sepi Ligo was heavily damaged before it did that. I think it's Shadow Fury looks like he's probably going to be Chrono Courting back sooner and in a better position with all of these units. Well, he's trying to. One of the... Yes, one of the mechs is dead. The other mechs have died. Farbots are helping out quite a bit, and now these mechs are not being as useful as they were before. And this Epilu is going to be healthier once the next iteration comes along. So yeah, Shadow Fury's put himself in a pretty good position with his chrono porting. And like I said, he really does have map control. He's getting the north... Getting the northeast expansion as well. So yeah, now he is definitely getting... Well, not only the safe expansions anymore. This is a Shalka safe expansion right now. It still always was, actually. Hasn't taken the South Expansion, though. And, like I said, probably didn't think about this at the time that the safe Expansion has kind of changed. Seppi's coming in, going to be able to deal with Tornado, but they aren't targeting Tornado. The tank is going to be able to make sure we're working on Tornado as well. They're not targeting properly. Shaka does have a bit of a chance of getting out of this, but this blue time wave, the blue time wave down here has the Chrono Ports from Shadow Fury, which will be able to deal with everything. So this is not going to last long. The Far Pod is going to be able to put a bit of damage to the mechs, but... Really, until the Sepi stop distracting the Tornad, the mechs are... Well, the Farpod, sorry, is safe. But once the Tornad actually manages to get through and get close to the Farpod... You know what? The Tornad's not doing that. Shock actually isn't pushing towards doing that right now. Doesn't have a lot of Chrono Energy anyway, so I'm not surprised. Nope, never mind. Never mind. The Tornad is close enough. The Farpod is going down. Farpod has gone down, and Shadow Fury has lost his main attack force in there. Losing a Seppi to a defense turret as well, so actually really good thing Shaka had built these earlier, because like I said, that was about, what, seven minutes ago that he built those? That's impressive. He actually, like, I mean, well, useful eventually. Sorry, just drinking my tea. Anyway, useful. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now the main base is being rebuilt, so Shalaka's actually managing to rebuild his main base. Shadow Fury's going to have a tough time dealing with this, because right now Shadow Fury, his main base has all but dried up. He has two expansions right now, but... Of course, they could be attacked. And the Chrono Ports are being able to destroy that north main, but of course, his Shaka's actual main is still... Well, it's, it's coming back up. He's remaking it. There's a mech there. He's building Macrofabs. And Shadow Fury isn't sending any units there yet to kill it. But a Farbot is actually coming back. Might be able to do some damage. I'm not sure if he'll be able to actually kill that mech before anything useful comes up. I highly doubt it, just because that Farbot likely is coming from a bad angle. It looked like it was going to start attacking the Importer. But it's not being focused on right now. The green time wave is carrying that forward. And I do not want to mess up the replay again by editing and going into observer mode. So just going to know that green time wave... Oh, sorry. Shadow Fury is looking at that. So... No, it was. Anyway. Anyway, the green time wave, we will see the results of that. What came out of that. And yes, Shadow Fury is actually attacking the south base. We'll be able to use it quite effectively. So the south base is being attacked. Plus the far pod is being sent back to deal with it before it even existed. Or at least before it was a threat earlier on, so saving more of the RPs and allowing that base to be used. And now the main group, Shadow Fury's main group, is coming towards the southeast, towards Shalka's original main, with a bunch of frigates to attack it, and it looks like no, the Farbot actually didn't do too much. The That attack did, there was some damage done to the main base here, and the north, sorry, the main base, the secondary main in the north, but not to the actual main in the southeast. So once Shadow Fury gets his main group in there, he's probably going to chronoport them back, and then use, actually, no, maybe not. He doesn't have a lot of QP left. You know, Chrono Porting might actually be out of the question, but even then, with the units that are coming in, he should be able to take, well, uh, four frigates, uh, four frigates versus four Sepi because Sepi will win. There's no contest there. On top of the fact that Farpod's coming in, dealing with the turrets. However, Octoligo coming in, that's gonna really help out, take care of the, far, the frigates, with Farligo also in tow, but that died very quickly. Shadow Fury does not have special, so the Far League did not have freeze, and yeah, lots, <laughs> lots of pod class pro generators as well. So Lego army coming in to try to deal with everything, and will definitely be successful. Doesn't even have to try. Seventh League coming back, dying in vain. Should that will probably be aborted. Shaka 
just killed that no problem. I mean, it was a bad spot for him. Shadow Fury did not really think that through, unfortunately. He'll probably abort that, though. Because, of course, the turrets just got rid of it. There's really no way around that. Anyway, the Farley who actually managed to survive this time a bit longer is still going to die, but it's survived slightly longer. Getting into a position that didn't have it die immediately. No, the Chronoport's still going. So apparently Shadow Fury hasn't bothered to cancel that Chronoport, even though it's totally useless. Like, all of his units are kind of No, that'd be, that would still be suicide. I don't really know what the point would be. Now, actually, from this position, they'd be better position to corner court. I think that Shadow Fury might be doing that pretty soon. As soon as you get rid of the frigates. There you go! Okay, so one of the... No, still a bad spot. The frigates are there, getting rid of the second ego. So Shadow Fury really not... Really wasting a lot of his chrono ports, just throwing into the wrong times and the wrong places, not considering the units that are going to be there. Really should abort most of these. Looks like this, yeah, the second legal chrono port here has been aborted entirely, which is the best option, really. There's not much point in having it. An octal legal being chrono ported might be useful, and a bunch of base class units coming in as well. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, half a dozen base class units coming in to deal with this, and more base class coming in from the main base. Shadow Fury is totally focusing on base class rush right now, getting a couple more octal legals as well to help support, but mostly base class. And also tons of, I mean, got a ton of LC. Like, look at all the LC that Shadow Fury has. Almost a thousand. At 22 minutes, like, almost a thousand, two minutes into the unplayable will pass. Let alone, or a minute into the unplayable will pass, sorry, the front energy amount makes it a bit hard to tell. Let alone at the playable pass. The playable pass, even then, he still has tons of, tons of resources and is able to build up. Shalka, however, has 400 LC. He can build up a bit from factories, but he doesn't have many factories. He doesn't have many macrofabs. He needs more QP, really. And... Shadow Fury is just being able to just tear everything up. And two more Octoleagos coming up. These are the Octoleagos that were built before. More base class units coming in. Really, Shadow Fury's only limiter at this point is Chrono Energy. This would be the sort of time where you would macro in the present. It wouldn't be a big deal. Shalka won't be able to take care of Shadow Fury's stuff in time. Shalka does have Gate Tech, however. He does have a Teleporter. No Chrono Porter, apparently, on the map. A Marine is further along the map. Looks like it was probably teleported out. And, yes, more stuff. That Teleporter was just activated. Looks like there's more teleportation going on. So yeah, bunches are being teleported away from the main base. Teleport in to attack or build RPs. RPs mostly being teleported away, actually. And that is... Shalka's really last... His last-ditch effort to stay alive is getting those RPs out, getting them teleported along, getting them into the other bases. Now, Shadow Fury does have some Octos here as well that are being... Well, that will be used eventually, probably to build RPs, or at least just to attack, make sure the base is completely empty. Then eventually build RPs, but find out fairly soon that... No, no, there's... Oh, no, a dome is being built up, and then probably more RPs. And that dome will be able to take care of the RP coming in from Shalka, no problem. And, of course, more RPs coming in. All being teleported out of the main base. Shalka is trying his best to teleport his units away. Just keep himself alive by distraction, and... These archers just don't care. They, they, they're done for the day. They're, their shift's over. I'm just going to sit down. Appreciate the view. Watch the Macrofabs fall. Well, anyway, RP, RP is in the south base for Shalka. That's his main money maker right now. That's a amount of LC, but doesn't have much to spend it on. Like I said, he doesn't have a lot of QP, and the QP is going to be his main bottleneck. He can get more mechs. He can get more. No, he can't get more infantry. He cannot get more infantry. If he builds an armory, he will be able to. He does have this marine out here. He can start doing that for a comeback game, but I think really at this point, comeback is almost out of the question. I'm a bit surprised those, those options. Okay, there they are. Now they're, now they're going. The Octo's decided to start working again. No, no, this Octo's still just decided. Nah, screw it. Nope, he's, he's going. He's... Supervisor came around. He's starting to work again. Destruction job, you know? That's uh, low pain, low skill work, but needs to be done. Need good demolitionists. And Octo's are good demolitionists. They just start shiftless sometimes. Eh, they're kind of annoying like that. Ah, well. What can you do? Anyway, this Octo is going to be killed for its sins. Well, that's what you get for being a lazy little bastard. You you die. You die. You die for being lazy. Seven Legal being Chrono Porter back as well to deal with the Shaka is double checking that happening, and Shadow Fury just seeing his whole base just fall apart. I'm oh, sorry, seeing Shaka's whole base just fall apart. Tearing it apart with units of every class. Octoligo, or Octoligo is coming in from the back. Octobot's already in the base. Faro's taking care of everything. And Marine over... Actually, the Marine over here looks like it got killed. It's hard to tell, but it looks like... There's the RP. There's the RPs in the south. Shalka... Further in the past, he has his Marine up here. Hasn't actually done anything yet. 
and his main base has been completely cleaned out. And his north main is also dying, so yeah, it's it's going down. Yep, that looks like it's going to be a... Well, like I said, this, this marine, that shock is only hope. Chapter 3, from his point of view, doesn't see it yet. Actually, he's trying to figure out where, looks like he's trying to figure out where Shalka is. He's looking around the map, looking across, across all the outside sections, looking on the water to make sure that there aren't any air units just floating around on the water somewhere. Nothing's really going on, and yeah, this is going to be, well, this is almost the end of the game, it looks like. <laughs> Unless Shalka can really pull something out of his hat with this marine here, the Octo is going to be able to care, no, the Octo is, ah, it's killed it. Shalka does not have that Marine there. The Octo did manage to kill it off, and Octo is coming in. Another Marine, however, in the south. Like, Shalka still has that one Marine. That really could just save it for him. And it looks like, however, Shadow Fury... Oh, this is the Sepulchre Chrono Port that we saw earlier. That was the Chrono Port departure that was detected. And that is going to be... Well, I mean, Shalka is holding on. I got a applaud his tenacity, except when I was playing the game, when I was kind of annoyed by it. But, where the hell is he? I gotta say, watching the game, I applaud his tenacity. It's that he's dead. He has a few RPs left. He has a Marine, which he isn't using. He has. And that's being attacked heavily, and that Marine is now dead. Or will be dead soon. Shaka, back when he is, does not have anything built up. And yeah, he is gonna be defeated very soon. 2850, so in 20 seconds from now, he's gonna die, or 10 seconds since we're fast forward. Sebi Paws will be coming back around and killing off this Marine. Farley will be coming in as well. And it's one of the neat things about this map is that these mountains are high enough that Aryans have a hard time getting into these bases, which is something that was totally intentional, was to make it a bit easier to defend these bases, because they're the only expansions really on the map other than the other mains. And that is... Yeah, that's it. That is going to be that game. That is the third game that that's the last game I'm going to do for tonight. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'm glad there are actually people watching live. There are people watching live, not just people watching YouTube. Although, please do watch the YouTube versions as well. I, I mean, I post them on YouTube. That's where most of the views come up from. And if you like it, feel free to subscribe. There's the subscribe button that's on the bottom somewhere or the top. I, YouTube changes its UI all the time. There's no point telling you where that is because it's going to probably change by the time you guys watch it. Anyway, regardless, that is pretty much the game. Shadow Fury is just running around making sure that you can figure out what's going on, where all the units are, and looks like there's really no word that Shaka is anymore. Shaka has died. He is just assessing the situation, figuring out if there's anywhere he has that he can survive. Probably just trying to take it all in, honestly. And that appears to be the game. I really don't see any way Shaka can live. A couple of the Seppies decided to turn on their brother, but it's no big deal. It's a hive mind anyway. I mean, who cares? Eh. No, sort of. It's sort of a hive mind. I'm not sure exactly. It's like if you had the internet in your head. That's how it works for Grekum. They, they have their entire sort of internet in their head. That's a cool idea, actually. But it, it's sort of, yeah, it, it's sort of weird when you think about it. Anyhow, Shaka is dead. Shadow Fury is not. I, that's pretty much the game. So, in the interest of not getting boring, Shadow Fury is building up mounds everywhere to try to figure out where the hell... Where in the world Shaka could possibly be, because Shaka's just died and hasn't GG'd yet. So yeah, just to save you guys a bit of time. So that is, that's the game. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a good night.